You know, I want to bring up some really underappreciated factors in the relationship to treating the thyroid, especially hypothyroidism with Synthroid or some other synthetic hormones. You know, unfortunately, this is not a short-term treatment. It's a long-term treatment. And so you're taking this hormone, like what are the side effects? Are there any side effects other than a total dependency on this hormone that you're taking? But there's another side effect that I want to talk about that you probably are not aware of. When someone takes Synthroid over a period of time, especially if it's postmenopausal, there's a higher risk of getting bone loss or osteoporosis or even osteopenia. So the question is why and how that relates to maybe a better option. So this video mainly relates to those people who want to continue to do conventional care. They don't want to do alternative care and or they're already on Synthroid. Okay, this is a really important video for those people. You know, a lot of times when you get hormone therapy, whether it's estrogen therapy or even thyroid therapy, you're given this one hormone. But I have an interesting question. If you're getting treatment for the thyroid, okay, with one hormone, and the thyroid produces more than one hormone, um, what's happening with these other hormones? Or let's say, for example, you get a thyroidectomy, the complete thyroid removed, right? And then they treat it with one hormone, which is T4. So what about the other hormones? What about T3? What about T2? What about T1, that's right. And what about calcitonin, right? Calcitonin is another hormone in your body. And guess what? It's produced by the thyroid gland. So if you had your thyroid removed or you have hypothyroidism, what's happening with that hormone? Where is it coming from? And why isn't your doctor giving it to you? Well, they might say, well, we don't really understand that hormone. It doesn't seem to be a problem. But let's just take a look at what it does, okay? So you can understand that it does create problems if you're, if you're not taking it. So calcitonin has everything to do with regulating calcium. It works with another gland called the parathyroid hormone produced by the parathyroid, which is connected to the thyroid. You have four of them, two in the top, two in the bottom. So both the thyroid and the parathyroid work together to help balance mainly calcium but also other things like phosphorus and even to a lesser degree, magnesium. So what calcitonin does is it inhibits the breakdown of bone, okay? There's certain cells in the bone that are called osteoclasts and they break down bone to release calcium into the bloodstream. Whereas the parathyroid hormone will increase calcium. It helps to mobilize calcium from the bone. So you, you can see this uh, teeter-totter effect between these two glands. Well, what happens when you have your thyroid removed or your parathyroid removed, either one, and here's the problem. When they take out the thyroid, how do you preserve the parathyroid without damaging them? You must have to either leave some pieces in there or sometimes maybe just remove the whole thing. I don't know. But these parathyroid glands are very delicate and they're connected to the thyroid. So many times when you remove one thing, the other is affected. Anyhow, if you have your thyroid extracted or the parathyroid, you're now at risk for bone loss, okay? Whether it's osteopenia, osteoporosis. And now you know why, because you just removed the two key hormones that help regulate calcium. Now, there's another um, kind of ignored syndrome that um, there's not a lot of information about, but it's called hungry bone syndrome, where the bone just starts absorbing all this calcium, leaving the blood extremely low in calcium. And this occurs when you either have your thyroid removed or especially when you have your parathyroid removed. So now we have this other problem. We have low calcium in the blood. Okay. Here are the symptoms. And you should just know this. If you have these symptoms, this could be why, you know, you just don't have enough of these hormones that regulate calcium. So you might have numbness around the mouth, or even in the extremities, hands and feet. Also, muscle spasms, you get tetany, twitching in your muscles, and various cramps, maybe that wake you up in the middle of the night, and you have certain bleeding or bruising because calcium is also involved in the clotting factors, and without enough calcium, it's hard to clot. But also realize you might be low in phosphorus, which affects your energy and your ability to make ATP, which is the energy reserve in the body, as well as a lowered amount of magnesium, so these are just things that you should know about going into 
a surgery for your thyroid, or if you have hypothyroidism and you're getting treated, or you're on Synthroid, they even have a treatment. It's um, giving someone calcitonin from salmon for osteoporosis. Too much calcium in the blood. It's called hypercalcemia because calcitonin helps lower calcium. And it's even used as a treatment for spinal stenosis, which happens to be like a buildup of calcium in the spinal cord, uh, causing pain, things like that. So I think it's really important to understand that these glands make more than one hormone. And if you're going to get treated with Synthroid for some reason, I would bring up the argument uh, for taking Armour Thyroid. It comes from a natural source, an animal source, but at least Armour has T4, T3, T2, T1, and calcitonin. It was what they used before they developed Synthroid. Uh, it might be more difficult for the doctor to regulate, but it contains all these hormones. So why wouldn't you want to take that? Or at least maybe take both. I don't know, but you can work that out with your doctor. But the point is, when someone says that, uh, well, we don't do that anymore, you, you better have a good reason for it. Um, like, for example, it's not going to create any problems. Well, show them the references down in the description of this video of the higher risk for getting osteoporosis. Maybe they're just not aware of it. I just wanted to put this information on your radar. And I think it's really relevant to talk about the deeper causes of the thyroid as well. And I put that information in this video right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.